There's a saying that goes, every sale is made based on emotion and then justified by logic. And so I want to dive into that saying because there's so much truth to it. And if we took a step back and really understood the meaning of it, I think we can actually all use it for our advantage. If you've ever found yourself unable to relay a message to your prospect, it might be at the pitch table, you might do, be doing your presentation, but you couldn't necessarily connect with them even though you yourself were convinced you have a great product or a great service and you can genuinely change their lives for the better. You can literally deliver a great deal of value but for whatever reason they just didn't want to help themselves and I think it's important to really learn from that but typically what we do at naturally as, as salesmen is we'll we'll sometimes go ahead and bounce back the blame right and just say ah oh, well they were dumb they didn't understand it and the problem with that is though is that we never actually fix the root of the problem we never take the root of that issue and learn from it and develop a, a more tactful way in uh, in improving our next presentation or our next pitch or our next point of communication and so in this video what i want to do is i really want to elaborate on emotional intelligence as a matter of fact this entire week i'm going to dedicate to emotional intelligence call it ei and why emotional intelligence is so important is because of that saying Every sale is based on emotion and then justified by logic. And whether you like it or not, even if you do not sell as a profession, you have to agree with me that we are all in sales. As a matter of fact, the reason why we communicate most in particular is because we want something in return, whether it's an answer, whether it's a date, whether it's a yes, whether it's compliance, in some way, shape or form, we want something in return. And so therefore that's a sale. The likelihood of us getting what we want in return is going to be based on how well we know how to sell. So if you want to improve your sale and if you want to understand this key thing called emotional intelligence that enables you to be a master of others as well as a master of yourself and then become a master salesman well in this video i'm going to teach you the art of status let's go hey. my team came from the bottom on the rise yeah god please don't get me lost in this ride yeah went to sleep i had a dream of that fish scale fish is so good then put it right on the street at retail What's up everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. And in this episode, we're going to talk about status, the art of it. And why is because I want to dedicate this week in talking about emotional intelligence. I think it's probably the one the one most powerful skill set that you can have as a basic human being. And I mean basic as in just in general human beings. So you don't even need to be an MLO. You don't need to be a sales closer. You don't need to be, you know what I mean, <laughs> in the grind of any sort or in marketing. You could just be a just your everyday folk. Having emotional intelligence will give you just this strong upper hand against literally everything. And and I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying like against competitorship, like you have to outsell or outperform. But what I'm saying is just gonna give you the upper hand upon the grind of life, the everyday grind that we go through. And in some way, shape or form, we go through some sort of temptation to not deliver our most, right? But if you understand the art of emotional intelligence, I believe that you can have the upper hand over that temptation. And so in this episode, what we're going to start off with is understanding status. And I'm going to explain it in both ourselves as well as the prospect or the person that we're engaging with because that in itself is a form of empathy and empathy is a is a is a strength of emotional intelligence and empathy is just basically looking at it from both sides of the table you know when you're when you're communicating with someone demonstrating empathy would be you taking a step back or at least at least considering how it would feel like to be in their shoes right like how their issue or their problems is like and what it's like and can you relate and if you can then let them know and empathize with them that's what empathy is and so emotional intelligence is uh is again a very strong uh tool to have within your toolkit and in this episode my goal is to show you how to basically leverage the idea of status and why most of our decisions i would say pretty much every single one of our decisions in some way shape or form is going to be based on status so if you think about it you know let's take a brand name for example right at some point or another you may have paid more than you had to for a brand name item 
So for example, you may have purchased something, you know, of at Nordstrom or Bloomingdale or at some sort of high-end retail store rather than getting the same exact item from Walmart or from let's say Kohl's, right? Even though they're the same, technically the same item, they are, they're both a shirt, they're both underwear, they're both socks or they're both dress pants. In some way, shape or form, they're both technically the same thing. They both do the same job. But the reason why you paid more, knowingly paid more, is because of the status, the status that it gave you. Does that make sense? And so you were willing to part way with your income or with your money. And keep in mind that money is something that we will always want to protect because money is a sign of status, right? The reason why we want to generate more income or more money is because it gives us a sense of status. And we don't want to have a lower status of being of someone who does not have money to provide for themselves, provide for them family, um, rely on support from others. Does that make sense? So we, in some way, shape or form, we all are, are basing our decisions based on status. And this could be good or bad. You know, there are people like you know right now that are probably frugal AF, right? Like your parents. <laughs> you might have that one friend that like they're bond out of control, but they're still frugal. And it's because of status. The, it may not be immediate, like present day status. What they may be, be more conscious of or more kind of focused on is their long-term status. And so they have this fear, which is another emotion, and we have to understand the power of fear in order to really gauge and, and, and really understand and harness the power of emotional intelligence. But in that example, their fear is what kind of keeps them back, but yet they have the freedom to kind of expand, right? But it's their fear that holds them back. So in that particular instance, we know how to communicate with that person because they're ruled by fear. Make sense? Okay, so going back to status. All right, so besides, you know, uh, you know, buying a brand name, when we, when we think about our uh, selves being in a sales position, right? Meaning that we're being pitched to. So if we're being sold something, let's say if we're buying a new car or if we're buying a new watch or we're shopping for jewelry or if we're out buying a new home, whatever it might be, some sort of high ticket cost item, we ultimately, the root of it, the reason why we're even shopping for it to begin with, as opposed to the cheaper alternatives, is because, and, and some of you are vice versa, right? Some of you might be frugal right now. Some of you are shopping for the cheaper version as opposed to the alternative of a more costly version. But that is, again, it's more self-awareness. So only you will know you. But you have to understand and take both sides of the table and really understand the root of it is because of your status. And so when we relay this concept to the outside world, and it could be anyone, it doesn't need to be your prospect, it doesn't need to be your kids, you know, it could be your spouse, it could be your best friend, it could be your neighbor. You know, we have to understand that everyone is motivated from first a point of status, and that status is protected by emotion. Meaning that, meaning that if you're currently selling right now for a profession like I am, you need to entertain the, the idea or at least acknowledge their preferred point of status. And so if you're dealing with someone who's on a frugal side, then more than likely their status emotion, their emotional status is fear, right? Or, or security. They, they not, you know, you don't want to say that like, hey man, you're scared, bro. <laughs> you don't want to say that, but you could just get a sense of it. They're more um, modest. They're more you know, you know what I'm what word I'm talking about. They're not flashy, right? And you could sense this because they manage everything with a with a cautionable eye. Cautional. I hope that's the right way to say it. What I'm talking about is they're more conservative. Perfect word. And you could sense this by the way they manage their credit, by how much money they got in the bank, you know, and, and you look at their profession. And so if their profession is, you know, they've been in the same job for, you know, 15 plus years, they give 10% of their, their income towards 401k, they have no debt, the words they say is like, oh no, we, I, 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 we don't go out, right? We don't go out on hobbies, we save our money. And you could sense that their, their idea is through frugality, their, scent, their, uh, emo, their emotional strength is all based on fear. And so that's how you 
basically get a sneak preview of what status they prefer. And so if you can mold your message around that one sense of emotion, you're going to have, you're going to basically gravitate that emotion towards you. You're going to kind of be a magnet towards that emotion with your message because it's tailor fit to them. They are in light. It's kind of like you're playing the music genre that they most prefer. And so if you have, let's say, a prospect who's very flashy, right? Like they, like again, they could be on a, on a salary income, but they spend it faster than they get it. And you look at their credit report and they got credit cards with Nordstrom, Bloomingdale, Saks Fifth, right? They, they got a lease with like Mercedes Benz, but they got no money in the bank. Their status is pride. Their status is based on ego. And so what you can, how you can communicate with them, again, with the empathy of understanding what their status preference is, this gives you a huge emotional intelligence uh, handicap, an EI handicap, that is just gonna make it so much easier for you to effectively sell them or persuade them to take action now. And so in that example, if I was dealing with a prospect who's very flashy, right? Very, you know, just kind of just more or less just all smoke and mirrors. And we know this because we are looking at our leverage pieces, our inside information, because we see their credit report. We see the credit limit to max limit, right? Or the credit balance to max limit. We get to ask them how much money they got in the bank. We see what accounts they're maxed out on. We know how much their surplus is. So we know how they live. We know how they view the world. We know how they want to be viewed at as, right? And so to them, all it's going to be based on is selling the emotion of freedom. Make sense? And so because that's all they want. They want to give off this aura that they are financially free. When in reality, because you're looking at their x-ray, you know that they're not. And so you could sell them based on the, on the sense of freedom and that kind of wipe the slate clean right? Like a new start and a new start will become their bridge to start all over again. And it's unfortunate, you know, and I don't want you to take advantage of anyone in that state. So it's important that again, these the emotional intelligence is very, very powerful. You know, when you understand how to use these emotions to influence, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be a very strong force to reckon with. So I trust in you that you're not going to be using this to do any ill harm upon anybody. You're not gonna, you know, um, use emotional intelligence to take advantage of somebody or make them pay for more, you know what I mean? Like pay more than they should for something that doesn't give them any value. They should actually take away most value um, uh, than they pay for, right? Like they, they really have to benefit from it. But anyway, if I was dealing with someone who is more about that kind of the ego or that pride status to give that sense of freedom, what it's all smoke and mirrors and I know this, I'm not gonna call them out on it. I'm not gonna be the one who kind of like, hey, you should do this because that triggers their emotion of when they were a kid and they used to be kind of ridiculed by their parents, right? Like you have to understand that people at the end of the day, status is, is status. Like they don't wanna feel like they're at lower status and this is why they want to shop around because they don't want to lower their status of making of believing that they're paying too much so how do we how do we how do we counteract that we counteract that by making them believe that they're getting away with this amazing deal right because if they if they wait then they're not going to obtain the bridge to get to where they want to go and where they want to go should ultimately be decorated within that status or that emotional presence that they most prefer. And so whether it is frugality, whether it's security, whether it's fear, or whether it's pride, whether it's ego, whether it's flashiness, we have to be able to identify that. Because when we identify that, then we know how to make them buy. And if we know how to make them buy, then we know how to make them act with urgency. Then we know how to make them comply. Then we know how to make them not only buy, but be so excited that it just gives you full loyalty. That relationship, right? The reason why you're with someone right now is because they understand your emotions. They understand what moves you. They understand what what you fear. They understand what you love. This is why you have such a connection with them and a bond with them. Well, that is what 
inspires loyalty. That's what stops your prospects from shopping you is just having an understanding of what pushes them, what motivates them. So if you want to learn more about emotional intelligence and if you want to learn how to use this art to persuade others, I invite you to check out my courses. Go to salesremastered.com. I'm going to leave a link below this video, Sales Remastered University. The, the website is salesremastered.com and it's going to guide you straight to my university. And if you haven't downloaded a copy of the sales script, I got a perfect example of how to use emotional intelligence inside of a sales script. Again, I'll leave a link below the this video so that it can route you directly to my um, courses online. And then that way you'd be able to use emotional intelligence not only to increase your sales, but within the course, I show you how to use it to influence your support staff, your junior processors, your processors, your senior processors, management, underwriting. I, I show you how to use the art of emotional intelligence in order to automate a system and delegate the tasks that do not give you the most return, right? Those I like to call those MWAs, it's for minimum wage actions. So, so instead of taking on those minimum wage actions like chasing steps, right, doing minor admin work, like paper management, those are minimum wage activities. And we are in this for the, for the big bucks, right? So learn how to delegate that, but in order to delegate it and have enough trust to literally hand the baton off, you need to understand how to use emotional intelligence in your favor. So today was based on status. Please comment below. Let me know what your greatest takeaway was. And uh, also, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you hit the alert bell, you're going to be alerted by tomorrow when I move on to day two of emotional intelligence. But if you want to get this compact size course that's going to teach you all about emotional intelligence. It's going to teach you how to leverage the emotional intelligence, read your prospects, learn how to market to them, attract their attention, sell to their attention, and then close that attention. Then you're going to want to pick up the course. Either it's the Banker's Closer Guide or the Formula to Six Figures. The Formula to Six Figures has the Closer Guide within it, so I would strongly recommend if you want the full dynamics, the full circumference of learning how to automate a system, create a system, develop the right mind mindset, influence others, fast track your way to management promotion, and you want all the nuts and bolts of, of the emotional intelligence selling type method, then you're going to want to pick up Banker's Formula to Six Figures. Again, there's a link below the, uh, this, the in the notes within this video. It's going to take you straight to Sales Remastered University. It's called Formula to Six Figures, and I'll see you inside.